The Peanut Butter Falcon is a work of the highest literary and dramatic skill. But because it's been described by many critics as a feel-good movie, I worry that its depth, symbolism, careful attention to detail, surgical development of themes and images might be lost. So in praise of this great film, let's look at the art of the Peanut Butter Falcon. The Peanut Butter Falcon is a story about Zack, Tyler, and Eleanor. Zack is a 22-year-old with Down syndrome who wants to escape his retirement home where he has lived since his family abandoned him and to go to a professional wrestling training camp. Tyler, also a young man, fisherman, and thief, has a hard time keeping down jobs because he lost his brother one night when he fell asleep at the wheel. After setting fire to a rival fisherman's gear, Tyler sets on the road to Florida where he runs into Zach, whom Tyler agrees to take to the wrestling school in Florida. Eleanor works at the retirement home where Zach lives and will chase after him before joining their journey. Like any good journey narrative, this external journey mirrors the internal journey, the transformation of persons and relationships. Zach and Tyler, as a pair, are contrasted as well as complementary, similar and different. That is, they have multiple needs, multiple things that need transformation, and one of them they share and one they do not. They're similar in that they've both lost family and need a new one, but they're different in the following ways. Tyler is self-sufficient, independent, and able-bodied. Zach is dependent and has a physical difficulty. And as they go through their journey, both their similar needs and different difficulties will be transformed. Tyler's journey will be a journey out of self-sufficiency and selfishness, while Zach's will be a journey out of his self-perception of deformity, disablement. And they will find this as they create a new family. The first two scenes of the movie open with solitary characters, a shot of Zach and then a shot of Tyler, symbolically communicating their lack of family, their loneliness. This will symbolically change by the end of the movie where the last frame will be Zach Tyler and Eleanor together. But let's not jump too quickly to the end. When the story begins, Tyler is stealing crabs from another fisherman's traps. The other fishermen confront him, beat him up, and then Tyler sets fire to their equipment. The fishermen see the fire and start to chase after Tyler. Tyler escapes in a boat that, unbeknownst to him, Zach hid himself in looking for any way to get to his wrestling school. After some convincing, Tyler finally agrees to drop Zach off at the school on his way to Florida. Notice, Tyler begins thinking two false assumptions. First, that they're on different journeys, and second, that he is leading Zach. The first rule that Tyler establishes is that Zach cannot slow him down. So between geographically leading them and physically being faster, Tyler assumes that he is the independent strong one, leading a slow Down Syndrome boy down south. But Tyler doesn't realize that leading the physical journey pales in comparison to the importance of the internal journey of transformation. And in that journey, he's the follower. This inversion of the leader-follower relationship between Zach and Tyler is beautifully and symbolically communicated in multiple ways. First, Zach is the first to accept baptism. In response to the offer of baptism, Tyler responds that he is more of a baptism-by-fire type. The man performing the baptism says that he doesn't perform those, But that creates an expectation of baptism by fire to come, and come it does. Instead of accepting water baptism, Tyler will experience all sorts of baptismal adversity. First, his raft will be burned, baptism by literal fire. Then he will be physically hit with a metal bar and symbolically killed. 
I say symbolically killed because the director edited the sequence in the hospital to lead the viewer to believe that Tyler was dead. Zach did not have to endure all the baptismal fire because he didn't have the self-sufficiency, the selfishness that Tyler had, and instead accepted baptism. He acknowledged that he needed cleaning up, whereas Tyler needed to be shown that. Zach was leading Tyler in selflessness. Tyler will slowly learn selflessness. He gives Zach his pants, then his boots, then food, then drink. This is in contrast to his life of theft, taking from others. And in the end, it is Tyler's selflessness, self-sacrifice, that almost gets him killed. But here, he's so engrossed in Zach's wrestling match that he's not looking around, protecting himself from attackers. But the great irony is that Zach and Tyler fight their final battle at the same time, but each in their own way. This is because they have different problems, like we talked about. Zach realizes his strength and is able to summon it against an older man who calls Zach a retard, a symbolic embodiment of Zach's mistaken view that his Down syndrome is a weakness, throwing the man out of the ring. Tyler wins his final battle as well, but by dying. His problem was never weakness, it was strength, thinking that he was strong and self-sufficient. And so his final battle is death or defeat, but in a particular way, defeat as he is completely engrossed in another's world, watching Zack's strength, not engrossed in himself. He's no longer focused on himself, but another. This inversion is finally symbolized in the last scene where Zack, Eleanor, and Tyler are riding in the car to Florida. Tyler is lying down, bandaged and bruised from his attack, Zack in the front. What is symbolically genius about this final scene is how it dramatically communicates the reversal. You see, when Zack and Tyler first meet, they are in a vehicle, a boat, and Zack is hidden in the back, a passenger, a follower, and Tyler is driving. In the final scene, Tyler is hidden in the back and Zack is in the front, the leading position. Tyler is in the back with a physical deformity, physically communicating that Tyler has realized that it is not Zack who is disabled, but himself. And in this way, the reversals and the journey are complete. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out the video this week. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of not the normal thing I, you have on this channel, but it was uh, um, so literarily rich that I was just really excited about it and saw some like fascinating themes. And I actually didn't even get to everything I wanted to get to. Um, there's really fascinating stuff going on with um, what, the, uh, what the directors and writers did with Eleanor's hand and, and her progression there. Um, there's other fascinating things of um, Jacob and uh, uh, names like in the story so um, check those out if you guys are interested um, just drop a comment and I'd love to make something else um, if you'd like to support the channel I would love that you can go to patreon.com slash the Bible is art um, and drop any questions below thanks so much